students, welcome back to our course, Environmental Modeling and Simulation. In today's lecture, we are going to look at homogeneous reactors. In past, we have looked at the basic mass balance, material balance across reactors. We have talked about three different kinds of reactors, batch reactor, CSTR, which is continuously stirred tank reactor and plug flow reactor. Now we are going to look at the differences that we need to incorporate when these reactors are not acting perfectly. Now let me begin by defining what I mean by homogeneous reactors versus heterogeneous reactors. So homogeneous reactors are reactors in which we assume that they are completely well mixed. The concentration of the compound that we are tracking, that we are doing mass balance or material balance for is constant within the reactor. So it may be changing outside the reactor, but within the reactor it's well mixed, which is not always the case. Like when we were talking about mass balance in a previous lecture, I gave an example. A big room has only one fan, part of the air is properly ventilated, properly mixed. The other part of the room is not well mixed. That becomes a heterogeneous reactor which needs to be handled differently. So as a summary of what we have done before, we looked at batch reactor, uh, CSTR and PFR. In each of the cases, I gave you a rule of thumb, which is the rate at which the mass changes over time, dm by dt is equal to rate at which the mass is accumulating in the reactor minus the rate at which mass is decaying in the reactor. So let me just put d by dt here to make sure you understand that what the units are. This is still a rate situation. The rate at which mass is coming in and minus the rate at which the mass is going out. So this is our basic rule of thumb for material balance. Before you apply this rule of thumb, you need to make sure that you are clear about two important things. First is control volume. You need to be clear that you have defined your control volume, you know what your control volume are, and now you are conserving the mass within the control volume. The second, you need to be sure of what material are you doing mass balance for, right? For example, let's say we have multiple tributaries entering a river, and each tributary brings a certain amount of dissolved oxygen, a certain amount of BOD. So each tributary has a certain amount of BOD3, certain amount of dissolved oxygen. I'm putting I here to represent I is the number of tributary and has certain amount of flow that's coming in. So let's say there is a main river here and then the one tributary joins from here and the other tributary joins from here. And now we have the river continuing the flow. So this is I is equal to one, this is I is equal to two, this is the original river, and this is also the original river just flowing now. It has input coming from two different tributaries. Now we have three important things that we are looking at. First is the flow. Each of the tributaries are bringing in the water to the river. Then we have DO. The water in both tributaries have certain amount of dissolved oxygen concentration in them. So they're also bringing in DO. They're also bringing in BOD. Now, when I'm doing mass balance for this river, at this particular point, I have defined my control volume. I second thing I need to know is, what am I conserving? Am I doing mass balance for water, the rate at which water is flowing? Am I doing mass balance for DO? Or am I doing mass balance for BOD? The equations for each of them would look different, okay? The principle remains the same. dm by dt is equal to accumulation minus dk minus out plus in out is effluent, E is in. So in this control volume, for example, we can say mass coming in. So let's say we are doing mass balance for water, the easiest one. <laughs> so mass coming in would be Q of the river coming in here, Q of the river coming in plus so dm by dt, the rate at which mass is changing over time of water in this control volume plus tributary what tributary is bringing in so q1 plus what second tributary is bringing in which is q2 so i is equal to 2 minus what is going out which is qr out plus accumulation there is no new water being created in the control volume so accumulation becomes zero the water is not degrading into something else 
it's not being consumed by something else so de decay is also zero so this is what our mass balance looks like for water at steady state we can easily see the flow rate or the mass of the water flowing per time in the river after the tributaries have joined in would basically according to this will be summation of q1 plus q2 plus q river influent because dm by dt will become equal to zero this is applying mass balance to water when we apply mass balance to do it will look different so if i'm doing dm by dt for do now i'm focusing on the do not on the water so qrn is not what i'm going to use what i'm going to use is qrn multiplied by the concentration of do right that will give me the mass of the do okay this is a general principle that we use when we are trying to apply material balance you should know two things first control volume define it clearly second is be very clear about what material are you balancing what material are you targeting for your mass balance and then obviously we have the rule of thumb mass coming in mass going out plus accumulation minus dk is equal to dm by dt now let's look at the first scenario where we have slight change that we need to include in our rule of thumb typically we say on the left hand side of the equation written at the top dm by dt can be written as dcv by dt mass is equal to concentration of the material that you are balancing into the volume right now we can say that the volume of the reactor is typically constant so we can take v out and it becomes vtc by dt so the first scenario we are going to look at is when the volume of the reactor is not constant so we are going to look at membrane filtration So membrane filtration, the key here is that the volume of the reactor is not constant. Okay, so LHS changes. Let's look at our diagram, identify the control volume and let's talk about the, uh, let's identify the material that we'll be doing mass balance for. So let's say this is our reactor. And uh, it is well mixed because we are in this entire lecture, we are only going to cover homogeneous reactors. This is some amount of volume so volume of the reactor which is the volume of the liquid or reactants in the volume and then uh, concentration of the reactor is CR and you have a membrane here this is the boundary and then the water passes through the membrane and the concentration coming out is CP because we are doing the membrane filtration so the concentration is changing so the membrane works in such a way that Concentration coming out of the membrane divided by concentration flowing into the membrane, this dark part is the membrane by the way, is equal to constant P, right? This is an assumption, this will not be true for all membranes, right? In some membranes you might have first order decay happening, then this is not going to be constant, maybe second order, maybe zeroth order, we don't know. But in this case, we know that CP and CR is equal to constant P, right? Now let's do mass balance for this. So first step, let's find our control volume. This green area is showing me the control volume. Before I write material balance, we need to identify what material we are doing mass balance for. We are doing mass balance for a reactant, for a contaminant whose concentration is given by C. CR is the concentration in the reactor. Concentration of C in the reactor. And Cp is concentration of C in the product, which is filtered water, filtered solution. Okay. So dm by dt, the rate at which mass of the contaminant whose C changes over time is equal to mass coming in. There is no mass coming in, so 0. Mass going out. Mass is going out. QCP plus accumulation is there or generation is there contaminant being produced inside this no so 0 minus decay is the contaminant degrading inside the reactor no 0 so what we get is very simple dm by dt is equal to minus QCP so this resembles batch reactor however there is a difference in batch reactor, we could just expand on the LHS like so. M is equal to CV. In this case, more 
प्रिसाइजली सी आर वी आर बाई डी टी माइनस क्यू सी पी या नाउ इन बैच रिएक्टर द वॉल्यूम वी आर वुड बी कॉन्स्टेंट सो वी कुड टेक वी आउट एंड देन वील गेट आर इक्वेशन दैट कैन वी कैन इंटीग्रेट और वी कैन डू जोमेट्रिक एनालिसिस फॉर हाउर इन दिस केस वी आर इज ऑल्सो चेंजिंग विद टाइम and cr is related to cp via this so we can first put this here we can write cr is equal to cp by p so we get on lhs dcp by p vr d by dt is equal to minus q cp okay now the other thing we can do is we can expand on this we know cp is not constant cp is changing over time we also know vr is not constant vr is changing over time so we can expand this and make it look like so oh, i'm only focusing on lhs left hand side of the equation i have taken 1 by p out because p is constant so first we can take again we are expanding the differential using the basic principles of differentiation okay now notice one thing the rate the first one is talking about differential is talking about rate at which concentration is changing of cp over time which is okay because our rh is also include cp y minus sign because dvi by dd is negative because the volume of the reactor is reducing so we are putting a minus sign to make minus into minus plus so we can rewrite this system as 1 by p vr dcp by dt minus cpq is equal to minus cpq okay so um uh, this is your rhs by the way and this part is our lhs okay we need to make one more change in this equation here we already established that the rate at which dvr by dt volume of the reactor is changing is equal to minus q right so we can integrate this to find out vr and then we can substitute that here so we can say dvr is equal to minus q dt and we can integrate them we are from vo which is the maximum volume of the reactor at time t equal to 0 to vr which is the volume of the reactor at given time t from 0 to t and when we integrate this we get vr is equal to v not minus qt so if you substitute this here what you will get from this equation here is dcp by cp is equal to q1 minus p by v not minus qt dt okay so v not minus qt is basically we are now you can integrate this you can integrate this from time t equal to 0 to time t equal to t and then we can integrate this from cp not which is the initial concentration of the water or liquid coming out uh, all the way to cp and then we can get our answer which will be a logarithmic equation that will look something like this and then we'll get log cp by p c r not is equal to 1 minus p log v not minus t by v not okay so uh, what is important here to note is not the final answer but what is important here to note is how we incorporated the changing volume into our equation we use the same rule of thumb dm by dt is equal to input minus output plus accumulation minus decay the difference was the volume is not constant we also knew how volume is changing over time and what the volume would be any, at any given time we substituted these things and then we got our integral here that is very easy to integrate okay now let's look at another scenario now what is a sequencing batch reactor a sequencing batch reactor is basically like a reactor 
a singular reactor where multiple processes happen. So, what will happen is we will start filling in the reactor and then once it is full we will wait for the reaction to complete and then we will start removing the product from the reactor. Now, it sort of resembles batch reactor, but it is not a batch reactor. Why? Because in batch reactor we put all the reactants in, then we close the reactor and we let the reaction happen and when the reaction has finished only then we take out the products. In sequencing batch reactors the re reaction can happen in two cases during the fill in process when we are filling in the reactants and then the reaction can happen when it is completely full right it is completely filled and now the reaction is happening. So, difference that we need to incorporate here compared to batch reactor in sequencing batch reactor is we also need to look at what kind of reaction is happening during the filling in of the reactor stage. So, uh, in filling in the reactor stage what is happening is a volume of the reactor is changing. So, it is not very different from the membrane filtration reactor that we saw. So, basically during fill in we will have dm by dt, mass of the uh, reactant coming in of course, per time minus mass going out which in this case would be 0 because we wait for the reaction to finish before we take the mass out plus accumulation which uh, may or may not be 0 minus decay which may or may not be 0. Depending on our reaction, if our reaction is an accumulation reaction then accumulation will not be 0. If it is a degradation reaction then degradation will not be 0. For example, when we use SBR based or wastewater treatment systems then accumulation is 0, but decay is not 0 because degradation is happening. Now, on left hand side we will have dc v by dt, c is the concentration of contaminant in the reactor in your SBR and v is the volume of the SBR. During the fill in process dv by dt will be equal to q, q in at which the filling in of the reactor is happening. So, volume of your reactor at any given time t will be equal to the initial volume which may be 0 plus q in t. This is what you need to incorporate here. So, not very different from the um, membrane filtration example, but the important thing is you need to also look at what is happening during filling in once the SBR is completely full. Both of these need to be incorporated. Okay. So, your LHS now let us spend few minutes on your LHS. Your LHS will look something like this. QCN is mass coming in, this is during filling in. Once it is filled, write the different mass balance plus reaction. So, either accumulation, generation or decay and let us say it is a first order reaction, maybe not. Let us just say reaction rate is R and then the volume of the reactor is VR. Okay. So, now we have dVR by dt and VR, we need to incorporate both. One thing we know is that VR is equal to initial volume that was already uh, present of the reactor plus q in t ok. This we already know from the from here ok. So, now let us expand on this we will get d by dt v naught plus q in time c R now let us say the reaction rate is first order reaction. So, we can substitute it even further q is q in. Uh, since we are only talking about filling in, I want to get rid of in, ok. And then what we can do is uh, on LHS we will have. Yeah, we will have this. So, now again we are going to uh, use the simple principles of differentiation and then this is our equation for SBR. So, first we are going to differentiate the first term. So, we will have VO dc by dt. Why? Because VO is constant and then Q is constant, T and C are not constant. So, we will have Q CT by dt. So, again VO dc by dt plus QC plus T dc by dt. 
this becomes your LHS. And then this is your RHS. You equate them, you bring the variables, separate them, integrate them, you get your answers. Okay, so this was the case of sequencing batch reactor and let me write down the equation because this integration is not very straightforward. Again, as I said before, I do not require you to memorize the equation that I'm writing, the answer that I'm going to write. What I need you to be clear about is what's happening here, that the volume of the reactor when it, it's filling in in SBR is not constant. What I need you to do is be able to write this equation, to be able to write this and to then to be able to open up. Okay, so I'm going to give you the answer, but please don't memorize this. After integration, we see that we get C during filling in process, concentration of the contaminant is equal to C in, which is concentration at which it is coming in, divided by T plus V naught by Q. V naught by Q is hydraulic retention time multiplied by k, k is the degradation constant. So what we did is we said r is equal to kc first order degradation or accumulation whatever, right, minus c in divided by v naught by q k minus c o which is initial concentration multiplied by v naught by q divided by t plus v naught by q multiplied by e to the power minus kt, okay? This is the integral that you will get. Again, not very easy to integrate, but you don't need to memorize this. If you need this in your exam, I'll help you with it. I'll give you the equation. And I, I can already tell you, I'm not gonna ask that. I don't like questions where you just have to put in the value and get your answer. Most of the questions will involve writing the mass balance equations, opening them up, and I'll ask you to stop right where integration needs to happen. You can always collaborate with mathematicians. If you're a mathematician yourself, go ahead and integrate it. You can always collaborate with subject experts. But what is really important is to understand what's happening in your environmental reactor and then to write the appropriate mass balance equation for it. And then to know with what is constant, what is changing, how it is changing with time. Once you can figure that out, you have Mathematica, MATLAB, R who will do most of the work for you. So show you how to do these integrations. I'll show you how to uh, incorporate these models on R and on MATLAB. So that's not going to be an issue, but writing the equation, writing the model, conceptual model, mathematical model is really the challenge. Okay, students, this is all for today's lecture. See you in the next class where we will continue our discussion on homogeneous reactors. Thank you.